I'm in the big leagues. Told them don't miss me. Ballin' like Houston. Hey, feeling like Whitney. I need a bag, bruh. Send it through quickly. I'm making his dog. Like I'm in the big leagues. Told him that I gotta go, dog. I'm riding a road, y'all. I think that I'm back in my bag now. So I need that go, y'all. Got his when he throwin' a fastball. Just too quick for it. Pillin' off like the whip on. Welcome, See everybody. This Welcome back I got to another much. episode of Another Turnover. The basketball podcast where a basketball fan with zero basketball credibility gives his opinions on what's going on in the NBA. Opinions that nobody asked for. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Chris Aaron, Mur- Aaron Murphy, a.k.a. A.A. Ron. And ladies and gentlemen, let's just jump right into it. Folks, you, I hope you had a fantastic weekend uh, this past weekend. I know I did. Spent some time uh, with the fam, had, you know, birthday party, spent with my little brother and much six-year-old, so that was a lot of fun. But let's get into some NBA action. Let's talk about this weekend's marquee matchups that I laid out from Friday, Saturday, Sunday of this past weekend. Because for the first time this season, your boy, Mr. A. Aaron, went 3-0 and for my marquee matchup prediction. So I got every single game right. I'll be trying to tell y'all, be knowing my stuff, but I mean, y'all, y'all be sleep. Y'all be sleep. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the three games that I picked out and let's talk about what happened. So Friday's game, Friday's game was the Golden State Warriors taking on the Phoenix Suns in a rematch from last, if you remember last week, Tuesday's game of the same matchup. So this game was in Golden State at the Chase Center in San Francisco in the Bay Area. So the Golden State Warriors defeated the Phoenix Suns 118 to 96. So pretty much a blowout um, for most of the game. I believe, I'm looking at the, the stats here, Golden State won three out of the four, qu- four quarters for the game. Um, so it really wasn't close for most of the game. Um, now I figured this would happen, like I predicted in Friday show, I did, did think that Golden State was going to get their win back after losing Tuesday night's matchup. Um, the Suns beat the Warriors, like I said, in a tough matchup from Tuesday. Um, and Steph Curry, I think, had his, I think they said he had his worst shooting night ever in that Tuesday's game. So you know he was definitely going to bounce back, and bounce back he did. Uh, now, that that being said, all this being said, there was no Devin Booker for this game. So Devin Booker did not play, so that is the Phoenix Suns' best player. So, I mean, I didn't know that going in because I did predict, predict Tuesday night that the Warriors were going to win that Friday game. I didn't know, obviously, he didn't get hurt until Tuesday's game. But no Devin Booker. Um, Mikael Bridges um, did suffer a bit of a wrist injury in this Friday's game um, against the Warriors. He was able to return and come back to the game, though. But the Warriors had pretty solid production across the board all around. Stephen Curry, 23 points. It's a modest scoring night for him, which... 23 points for anybody else. It's like, oh, he had a solid night. But for Steph Curry, it's like on the lower side. But he did hit six three-pointers. I believe he went six for 11. So a pretty solid shooting night for him. Andrew Wiggins put in 19 points. You had Jordan Poole putting in 14 points. Toscano Anderson off the bench had 17 points. And Gary Payton, the second, had 19 points. So pretty solid production across the board from the starters, as well as some of your um, high-level bench players, your role players. Now, Draymond Green, I was looking at his stat line. His stat line was nine points, nine rebounds, nine assists, and six steals in that game, that Friday night victory against the Phoenix Suns. He had a plus minus. He had the highest plus minus on the team of 25 points. They were 25 points better when Draymond Green was on the court. Uh, Now, I know he gets a lot of, you know, he gets a lot of flack. People, you know, like to talk about Draymond Green just, you know, for a number of reasons. He does kind of have a bit of an annoying personality, but I want to give him his respect. He does the dirty work, you know, like nobody else does. He is their floor general. Um, He does a bulk of the rebounding, you know, the distributing, all that good stuff. Draymond Green, he is the ultimate Swiss army knife and He's not necessarily an all-star anymore, but he is an all-star for what he does for Golden State. So I definitely want to give him a shout out, you know, give him his respect because he is incredibly important to what Golden State does um, offensively as well as defensively and leadership wise, the intangibles. He is phenomenal. I remember a video from last year, last year, that yeah, I think it was last year when him talking up James Wiseman. Um, and he's basically their on-court coach. So shout out to Draymond Green. 
He is solid when it comes to production. Um, now, with this victory, the Warriors did take back the number one seed. So I believe their records as of right now, 19-3 and three for the Warriors, and I think the Suns are 19-4, and four, if I'm not mistaken. Now, not entirely sure how long Devin Booker is going to be out of commission. Um, I don't think they exactly said. They did say he's going to miss a few games. It probably is going to be a few weeks. Hamstrings are a little bit tricky from what I read. You basically kind of have to let them like let it, let it run its course and basically stay off of it. Um, but so we don't exactly know how, how long he's going to be out. But I would love to see this matchup again. I know, I think these teams are playing again for Christmas Day, if I'm not mistaken. But I would love to see this as a Western Conference Finals matchup. I mean, how incredible would that be? You know, the former powerhouse of the Western Conference taking on the new powerhouse of the Phoenix Suns. Um, it definitely, it would be a fast-paced series. Lots of three-point shots, lots of scoring. And we would get Klay Thompson and James Wiseman back. So those are two starters that we're still, you know, that Golden State still doesn't have that are, you know, going to add a tremendous amount of value to their team. So we shall see what happens. I definitely would love, I you know my early season prediction was the Phoenix Suns. I definitely did not see this coming from the Golden State Warriors. So I would love a hard fought seven game series from these teams in the Western Conference Finals. That would be my ideal Western Conference Finals as of right now. But let's go on to the next game. We had the Milwaukee Bucks taking on the Miami Heat from this past Saturday's game. So the Milwaukee Bucks did win this game and beat the Miami Heat, a shorthanded Miami Heat team, 124 to 102. Um, now, both teams, not just the Heat, both teams were missing key players. Um, there was no Giannis Antetokounmpo for the Bucks. He was out, I think they said right calf strain, if I'm not mistaken. There was another Antetokounmpo that played, Tanasis played, and he played, you know, pretty decent. Uh, so he had Giannis' brother out there, so they at least had one Antetokounmpo. But the Heat, um, there was no Jimmy Butler and no Bam Adebayo there. Their two best players. I mean, without their two best players, they didn't really stand much of a chance at all against the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. They pretty much lost every single quarter. Well, I think, no, they the Miami Heat won the fourth quarter only by a couple points. But yeah, they, they lost every single quarter pretty badly, at, I mean, throughout that game. Now, both teams, others, had some pretty decent scoring outputs. Although the Miami Heat, others, you know, when I say others, I mean, you know, their, their role players um, and, you know, bench players. Miami did not shoot the ball particularly well at all. Tyler Hero was in the starting lineup, you know, because Jimmy Butler was out. He was 4 of 17 from the floor. You had Kyle Lowry, who was only 4 of 12. You had Duncan Robinson, who was only 4 of 10 from the field, which isn't, I guess, that bad, but by his standards, not that great either. On the Milwaukee side, though, you had six players in double figures. You know, Chris Middleton, their second best player, had 22 points. Drew Holiday had 16 points. He also put in a good amount of assists as well. And then you had Bobby Porter's putting in a solid game. He had 19 points. Pat Connaughton, 23 points with uh, quite a few three-point shots as well. Um, and the other, Antetokounmpo, like I said, Thanasis putting in 10 points. But shout out to DeMarcus Cousins. Boogie Cousins had only played 11 minutes and made the most of his 11 minutes by putting in 11 points and five rebounds. So, He's probably going to get some more playing time. Um, the Bucks are playing without Brooke Lopez um, for the foreseeable future. I don't think he's out for the season. I'm pretty sure he's not out for the season. But to expect DeMarcus Cousins to get some minutes, and I really hope that he thrives and plays well with this my Milwaukee Bucks team. I definitely would love to see him get paid. I'd always love to see somebody get paid, you know, regardless of the sport that they're playing in. But Milwaukee Bucks beating the Miami Heat. This past weekend, as I so expertly predicted, like I said, by a score of 124 to 102. So the last game that I picked out was this past Sunday's game. This was the Charlotte Hornets taking on the Atlanta Hawks in Atlanta. Um, now, I before I knew anything about, you know, this game, obviously, predictions. I didn't know anything about, you know, who was playing and anything like that. But the Charlotte Hornets, I picked them to win, which they did. They beat the Atlanta Hawks 130 127, very, very close game in Atlanta. Very good back and forth game between both of these really, really young, solid teams. Now, going into the game, I had no idea. I think the report didn't come out until it was either the day of or it might have been Saturday during the day. Charlotte had four players that were out due to health and safety protocols. So their best player, LaMelo Ball, their leading scorer, um, who's pretty much, I think he's leading in every single category for the team, rebounds and assists as well. But LaMelo Ball was out 
due to health and safety protocols. Terry Rozier, a.k.a. Scary Terry, was also out as well. And then they had two solid rotational pieces in Mason Pumley and Jalen McDaniels, who were all out because of health and safety protocols. So four players. So when I found out that news, I was like, dang, I'm going to miss that one. Because, I mean, I figured that they were, I mean, I, they would still play hard and whatnot, you know, do what they can. But, I mean, beating Trey Young, John Collins, Kevin Herter, all those guys without LaMelo Ball and Terry, Terry Rozier, I didn't think that was going to happen. So shout out to them, you know, the Charlotte Hornets for winning that game. Um, for the game, the, the Hornets started Kelly Oubre and Ish Smith and Nick Richards. There's Nick Richards. I was like, I don't know who that is. But um, Kelly Oubre and Ish Smith are both solid rotational pieces as well. But you know what I forgot about, about the Charlotte Hornets team? I forgot they had Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward is on like a four-year, $120 million contract. So he hasn't had a bad season. I was looking up some of his numbers from earlier this year. But he is definitely overshadowed by the young guys in Charlotte. He is definitely overshadowed by LaMelo. And definitely pretty much overshadowed by Miles Miles Bridges as well. So I definitely forgot about him. I mean, hey, he's getting paid. He's no scrub. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, you know, he's not that good. But I'm just saying eh, he's probably overpaid. Probably one of the not so great contracts in the league. I remember when he was a free agent, became a free agent when he was with the Boston Celtics. I had a feeling that he wasn't going to resign because of a similar situation. Like that team was run through... Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and now he's in Charlotte where he got that money and now this team is run through LaMelo Ball and Miles Bridges so maybe he's cool with it like I said I'd be cool with it shoot if I was getting 120 million dollars you didn't have to play me but that's a story for another day um, but like I said Gordon Hayward was still on the team he is still on the team I should say he had 18 points so I mean a decent night but this game was all about Miles Bridges and the production that he had 32 points, very, very efficient shooting night, 11 for 15 from the field, four of six from the three-point range. Um, I saw a quote from Nate McMillan, the Atlanta Hawks coach, basically saying, like, this Charlotte Hornets team is probably the best catch-and-shoot three-point shooting team in the NBA. So they definitely put up a really solid fight. You had Kelly Oubre had 28 points, hit a bunch of threes as well. Um, so this young Hornets team, they are 14 and 11 on the season best or you know they are six in the eastern conference right now so they are a legitimate playoff team as of right now i don't think they're very far ahead of whoever's in the seventh spot but they are a legitimate playoff team right now they are a solid playoff team so far they are not a play in team now i definitely could see them teetering around that you know six seven spot you know but it's a big difference now between six and seven you know seven means You've got a play-in game. Six means you're just in the playoffs and you're waiting for the play-in to finish. So it should be interesting to be able to keep that, you know, with a young team. they got some decent mix of veteran talent. So, I mean, it should be okay. But I don't know if I would pick them to win a series as of right now, depending on who their matchup is. Like, if they match up with Milwaukee in the first round, I mean, they're probably done. I mean, if they match up with Brooklyn, if they match up with... I don't... I would even give... I wouldn't say Miami is a, a shoe in to beat them if they played in the playoffs. But if they match up with Brooklyn or Milwaukee in the first round, it's going to be tough for them to beat, you know, based off of how young their team is. But we shall see. I One thing that I wanted to talk about also uh, with this game is just kind of how bad the Atlanta Hawks are or how bad they're starting their season. 12-12, um, and 12 at, they're right at 500, 10th in the Eastern Conference, not far from the 11th spot at all. So they are clinging, as of right now, in the early part of the season, to a play-in spot. Um, going from the Eastern Conference last year to being, you know, clawing in for a playoff spot so early on in this season is pretty crazy. I did not see this coming. Even in the game I was looking at the box score, Trey Young had 25 points and 15 assists. John Collins had 31 points and 12 rebounds. So it's not like they played that poorly. I mean, they only lost by three, so it was a close game. But you had Kevin Herter, 28 points and seven three-point shots made. So they've got a really solid coach, a coach that I like, and Nate McMillan, who is um, arguably, he is what helped turn their season around from last year. They fired their coach midway through the season last year. He became the interim, and he coached them all the way up to the Eastern Conference Finals. So, I mean, it's it's weird. I'm not entirely sure what the issue is with Atlanta. Um, I think it might be on the defensive end. I don't 100% know that for sure. But 
Atlanta Hawks not playing well so far. So it is interesting. It'll be interesting to see what ends up happening with their season as a whole. But let's transition a little bit. Let's go into around the association for news that has come out over the past couple of days around the association. So first thing that I want to point out, um, Chicago Bulls guard DeMar DeRozan has been placed in NBA's health and safety protocols. You're listening to this Tuesday. So he wasn't able to play in the game on Monday last night against the Denver Nuggets. So a report here from Associated Press of Chicago. Bulls leading scorer DeMar DeRozan entered NBA's health and safety protocols on Monday, a major blow for a team with the second best record in the Eastern Conference. DeRozan participated in the morning shoot-around against the Nuggets. Coach Billy Donovan said he wasn't sure if the four-time All-Star tested positive or not. Um, now, the Bulls are 16-8 and eight as of right now. They're only a half a game back from the Eastern Conference. They are looking to make the playoffs for the first time since the 2016-2017 season. Um, Coach Billy Donovan said he wasn't sure if DeMar DeRozan was going to travel with the Bulls with their game on Wednesday. Health and safety protocols require players to be at least or to be sidelined for at least two days or produce two negative tests within a 24-hour period before they can come back to basketball activities. Um, DeMar DeRozan also joins his teammates, Kobe White and Javante Green, in these health and safety protocols. So that's not the only uh, thing that the Bulls are dealing with. Uh, Alex Caruso is dealing with a strained right hamstring as well he, that he sustained in that Saturday win against the Brooklyn Nets. So... Pretty big blow. Hopefully, DeMar DeRozan has come out and said he's tested positive as of right now. So hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully he's able to produce those two negative tests within a 24-hour span and get back to basketball as soon as possible. Because this COVID, we are still in the midst of it. It has not ended as of right now. So it's nice that the NBA is taking those precautions and you know putting measures and guidelines in place for the health and safety of not just their players, and personnel, but fans as well. So next story that I wanted to move on to, Dallas Mavericks head coach. There was a report that came out today. This was from um, the the show with Malika Andrews that I was watching on ESPN. I can't exactly remember the title of the show. But they were talking about how Dallas Mavericks head coach called out Luka Doncic um, and told him basically to stop lobbying for calls as much as he does. So J- Jason Kidd was basically um, talking about how Luca, you know, he really can't lobby for every single call. Basically, the point that he was trying to make was how while you're lobbying, trying to, you know, you know, argue for a call and while, you know, in active play, you're sacrificing, you know, us on the defensive end by not getting back on transition defense. So Ramona Shelbourne on ESPN Today basically reported that kid told Luca, the refs do not like you. I have heard you're not going to get those calls if they don't like you. Which kind of sucks because, I mean, you know, the refs should be as objective as possible. But at the end of the day, the referees are subject to human error. I kind of talked about the referees in an earlier episode this season. So, yeah, I mean, it definitely, if they don't like you, I mean, yeah, they're probably going to swallow that whistle a bit more than, you know, you would like. But reportedly, according to Ramona Shelburne, that Luka Doncic took the feedback pretty well uh, based off of what Jason Kidd told him. You know, there is a very, very profound respect between the two of them because Jason Kidd, you know, Hall of Fame point guard, if he's not in the Hall of Fame already, he should, I mean, one day he will be, I'm sure he's NBA champion, but they both played the role of point guard, so Luka Doncic can definitely relate to him, and Jason Kidd can relate to Luka as well, so that was pretty, um, I thought a pretty interesting story that I definitely wanted to share, like I said, Jason Kidd's basically whole point was, you know, you're arguing with the ref, you know, with the refs, That means you're not getting back on defense. It was an interesting statistic from that story. So Luka Doncic is actually fifth in free throws attempts since he has come in the league from a couple years ago. But he's tied for the fourth most amount of technicals in that same span. So essentially, he's getting a good amount of calls. He's getting, he's arguably getting, already getting those superstar calls. But fourth most technicals, you know, whether that's, you know, him drawing at a player or a referee. So... It's like, dude, like, if you're getting the calls, like, you really, you can't spend that much time arguing or debating the calls that you didn't get, if that makes sense. So, Luka Doncic, I'm, but like I said, based off the the report, he took the feedback pretty well, and he is going to kind of help try to implement some changes in his complaining. But, last story that I kind of wanted to talk about, I wanted to discuss the Portland Trailblazer story that came out the other day. So according to a report from ESPN, 
Portland Trail Blazers have fired their GM president and also president of basketball operations, Neil O'Shea, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Portland Trail Blazers fired GM and president of basketball operations on Friday following an independent investigation that determined if he violated the team's code of conduct. Um, so if you remember, you know, Trail Blazers announced earlier this month that an independent law firm was conducting an investigation into concerns about workplace environment by non-player personnel at the practice facility. The reports were that Olshay had created a hostile work environment with instances of bullying, bullying and intimidation, according to our, a Yahoo Sports report at the time. Um, Olshay has been a member of the Tra Portland Trail Blazers since 2012 when he took over the GM position and then he became also the basketball operations president in 2015. Trailblazers president and CEO Chris McGowan also stepped down last month after nine years in his position. And he was, it says, after nine years in his position with Chief Commercial Officer and Executive Vice President Dwayne Haskins taking over from that role. So a lot of uncertainty and a lot of turmoil within the Portland Trailblazers organization as of right now. They are definitely not living up to expectations. They are 11 and 12. They just got blown out. Well, this was Thursday night, so, you know, a few days ago. They got blown out by the San Antonio Spurs. 114-83 to 83 lost. A home loss, by the way, losing to the Spurs. So, um, they have been a perennial playoff team, but they have never been considered, at least in my opinion, they have never been considered a true contender in the NBA. So, a lot of uncertainty. I definitely don't think that this is going to end well. For the Damian Lillard, you know, hopeful or the people that are hoping that Damian Lillard, you know, is wanting to stay in Portland. I could see either either one of two things are going to happen. One, Damian Lillard is probably going to ask for a trade by the deadline if this continues. I mean, 11 and 12, they're not going anywhere in the Western Conference. Two, they're going to have to pull the trigger, the Portland Trailblazers, that is, on the Ben Simmons trade. They're going to have to trade for Ben Simmons. Um... There was a report that actually just came out today talking about how Damian Lillard wanted to play with Ben Simmons in Portland, and Ben Simmons liked something on Instagram that said, "As you know, we take how much stock we take in Instagram likes now." So, I think Philadelphia is going to have to consider doing that trade, that CJ McCollum Ben Simmons trade, and something surrounding you know that um, because it, it's not looking good. For Portland. I mean, that would, their defense, I think they're ranked 30th in defensive efficiency. So they are terrible on defense. I mean, they are just absolutely trash on the defensive end. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Portland Trailblazers. I do not expect anything from them in terms of contending for an NBA championship anytime soon. So at this point, Damian Lillard's not getting any younger. Why not make that Ben Simmons trade? But we shall see what happens. But we got some good games coming up later this week. Um, tomorrow, well, tonight, I should say, if you're listening to this on Tuesday, tonight you've got the TNT doubleheader. You've got the Brooklyn Nets taking on the Dallas Mavericks, which should be a pretty good game. you got the last Celtics-Lakers game of the season. Uh, we had the one from a couple weeks ago. This will be the last one. Wednesday, tomorrow, you've got Celtics taking on the Clippers. That should be a pretty good game, too. As well as the Mavs and the Grizzlies, um, two young teams. I think John Morant is still out, but the Grizzlies are actually playing pretty well without John Morant. They are holding their own really solid team. Got a lot of got a lot of dog in them. So, But, ladies and gentlemen, that is all the show I have for you today, folks. As always, I am very, very grateful for your listening. If you could do all the good things, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. If y'all could do another thing... I don't have a sign-off. I have not been able to figure out a sign-off since, I mean, this is season two that we're in, and we're 13, what, this is the 13th episode? Um, if if y'all could give me some pointers on a sign-off or any suggestions, I will take them at this point, because I'm listening back to some of my episodes, I'm just like, dang, I need a, you know, you know all those people that have like a really good sign-off or a really good saying as they go off the air? I need one of them. I need some help, so I'd appreciate it. But um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. I will see you this coming Friday where we will talk more NBA hoops action. Like I said, as always, take care, be safe, and I'll see you Friday. Yeah, I told him I'ma hit it out of stance. I deserve another hundred bands. I deserve another hundred fans. Told him this was always in the plans. I just did it cause they said I can't. Blowing euros when I'm down in France. Labels asking how I build a brand. Told him put a check up in my hands. Who got time, no cap. Made a few
sex, but they all in a rest. Had a few friends, but they suck in the past. I don't even trip when I'm thinking about that. Hopped in a 